Carnival, carnival, carnival. You did it. Wow. Carnival Mardi Gras. Just got off of her a few days ago. And uh, I got to tell you about that. Let me just do it list style. I got 10 things I really loved about the Carnival Mardi Gras. And four things, not so much. Carnival Mardi Gras. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, uh, here with my takeaways from the Mardi Gras. Like I said, we'll do it list style, 10 things I love, four things not so much. And uh, let me give you a little bit of a disclaimer. And, and for this, I feel bad. I've really been struggling, honestly, transparently here. I've really been struggling in 2021 to try to figure out what it looks like to go back cruising again and what does it look like as a cruising content creator uh, who's kind of transitioned into doing this show here in the studio. In the past, I would spend every one of my cruise days carrying around a camera, trying to capture every little thing, trying to make the best story that I could. And to be honest, uh, sometimes I felt a little disconnected from the people that I was cruising with and from the cruise experience. And so to correct that, uh, this year I've really just tried not to do that. I've left the camera in the cabin a lot, and I've really tried to focus on the people that I am cruising with. And so when we went on the Carnival Mardi Gras, there were a couple big cruise mates that I had. First, this was the second cruise for Jenny back after a, a long period of time of no cruising. So I wanted to be there. I wanted to be present for Jenny. And second, this was our first group cruise back since the shutdown. We'd canceled a lot of them. It was our annual Halloween group cruise. And there were about 150 members of the Loca fam that had booked specifically with us to go cruising. And so I wanted to be present for those guys. And then also kind of new in 2021, a lot of people know me. And so uh, in addition to being present for Jenny, and the Loca fam, I also tried to do my best to be present for other people on the cruise ship that uh, are meeting me for the first time. With all that said, I've got a list of 10 things I really love. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of accompanying footage. And uh, apologies for that. There's a lot of great uh, footage out there of the Mardi Gras. I really want to go back and get some great footage. I'll do my best to describe it. And then I do have some footage of some things. And one more disclaimer uh, about Mardi Gras. I, I couldn't try it all. Uh, we were on that group cruise. One of the connection points that we had was main dining. So for most of the nights, Jenny and I were in the main dining room. So that means we really didn't try any of the specialty restaurants for dinner. I didn't do much on the top decks, like in the, you know, with Bolt, the roller coaster. I didn't even see the water park, that kind of thing. And so these are going to be based off of my experience with Mardi Gras. Uh, I do need to go back to experience more. I'd like to try more of the things like, you know, the carnival kitchen and the chef's table and the specialty dining. That's the disclaimer. That's where I'm at. And look, I've got a new plan for how to go and be a cruise vlogger, but also how to be a good cruiser when I'm cruising with others. That may involve a little doing separate cruising for separate reasons. And I'm going to give that a shot later this month. Spoiler, can't tell you where, but yes. Um, okay, let's focus, focus. All right, I got a list of 10. That'll help me focus. Number one, Java Blue. Now, Java Blue is the coffee bar, the coffee brand on Carnival, the, or the branded coffee bar. It's going to be one of those shows where the words don't come very easily, uh, but I'm excited about Mardi Gras. So uh, a lot of the things I'll be talking about is how Carnival has innovated uh, what they already had. So Java Blue is one of those. A lot of times when you see Java Blue on the, on the Carnival ship, it's, it's, it's an old coffee bar that's been converted into a Java Blue. Maybe it's an old library that got converted into a Java Blue. And it's interesting. You can buy coffee there in the morning. There's sometimes free pastries. In the afternoon, you can buy donuts and cupcakes. Well, what's interesting on the Carnival Mardi Gras is they've taken it out of the shadows, as it were. They've taken it where old libraries were or just a coffee bar along the promenade, and they've given it a prominent spot in Grand Central. This is the center spot of the cruise ship. Uh, this this is important. And they've also converted uh, what they do with Java Blue, making it a little more like Princess's International Cafe. Certainly, there's still coffee that you can pay for, but there is also included food well into the evening. Uh, by included food, I mean there is sandwiches, there's chicken pot pie, there's cheese and beef empanadas, there's steak and cheese sandwiches, there's Italian subs, 
There, there's a lot. They have a grab and go section. If you just want to walk up and get a pre-made tuna sandwich, you can just walk up and grab it. It's included. Now there's still the four pay things like the donuts and the cupcakes and of course the coffee, but they've really added another cool place that you can get included food. To me, one of the strengths of Carnival is their included food game, and they've upped it again by having included food at Java Blue. And the other thing they did with this Java Blue is there's a decent amount of seating, and where you sit there, you can take in everything that's going on in that Grand Central area, particularly center stage. I'm gonna save center stage a little bit because this is this is one of my favorite things on the cruise ship. Number two, another included food option, Shaq's Big Chicken. I was curious to see what Shaq's Big Chicken was like. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a chicken sandwich connoisseur and it either works out well or it works out not well. If you get a big thick piece of chicken that's dry on a chicken sandwich, it doesn't matter what you put with it, it's no good. I ate about four or five of Shaq's Big Chicken. It was the first thing I had on the cruise. They got a bunch of varieties of chicken, and I had the first one that I had was called the uh, the Big Aristotle, and it's a chicken sandwich with Munster cheese, with crispy onions, with bacon and barbecue sauce. And I tell you what, that chicken was juicy and it was tender. And I was like, well, surely they can't replicate that. Every time I went to Shaq's Big Chicken, uh, the chicken was amazing. And uh, I tried all the different varieties. I had their Nashville hot style. It was delicious. Um, this is a great included food option. It, you know, sometimes you can get uh, beefed out on the cruise ship. You know, like if you don't like the selections in the main dining room, there's always beef. If you can't find anything for lunch, there's always a guy's burger. It's beef, 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 beef. Um, even at the taco, even at Blue Iguana, beef. Chicken is a nice divergence from the beef, and they're doing it well at Shaq's Big Chicken. If you're on the Mardi Gras, you gotta have a chicken sandwich at least once. I loved it. Number three, all right, we'll come back to it. Center Stage. Center Stage is a multi-use venue, which is essentially now the atrium on the Mardi Gras. Now, if you are a longtime Carnival cruiser, you've seen the evolution or the different innovations when it comes to uh, the atrium. Uh, the very first cruise ship I went on, the Carnival Fantasy, that is classic Carnival atrium to me. Glass elevators, a semi-circle stage below the elevators, the atrium bar, this is where there was music and all kinds of stuff. This is where you would nightly find the cruise director up on the bar singing and dancing. And that's pretty much how the atriums were on Carnival cruise ships until we hit the Vista Club and they replace those nice big glass elevator multi-deck atriums with a with a like a digital a digital dealio is dealio a word a digital thing they changed it that's what i'm saying so if you go from all the previous carnival ships to the vista class with the vista the horizon the panorama you saw a shift in the way they did the atrium and now if you go to mardi gras boo, it's all the way out the window it's very divergent the atrium but center stage is cool like i said a multi-use venue so during the day this is a place for people to sit a place for people to chill there's a stage there uh big open windows you can see the ocean you can get your food at java blue you can uh, get uh, something from the bar you can sit socialize i played cards there you can do a lot of stuff at center stage but then at night uh, it transforms there's a set of screens that come down and it becomes the backdrop for uh the shows and i'm talking like these are theater big shows that normally would be in the mardi gras theater are now at this spot called center stage and it's wonderful because the seating is comfortable there's couches and big chairs and tables center stage i spent most of my time at center stage i loved 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 it that and and the combination of java blue uh some good times on a cruise ship number four family feud now we all go on cruise ships we've all seen shows like the love and marriage show we've seen a, a variety of shows but what i really liked is they have licensed family feud I, I would be interested to see how much they paid for it but if you go see family feud on uh, the carnival mardi gras or any of the carnival ships that have a family feud it's exactly like going to the show Family Feud. Again, they do great with technology. They have these screens. They've got a set that replicates what you see on TV. The format is the same. There are families that compete throughout the week to, to end up on the stage show. It's straight up watching the Family Feud, and it's a nice change, a nice change from some of the other cruise activities, some of the other game shows. Uh, you know, 
I'm a little bit of a fan of Family Feud. I'm like not hardcore Family Feud, but it was cool enough to see Family Feud on a cruise ship for it to make the list of things that I love. Number five, and this one's probably a shocker, I love the casino. Now, this was the largest casino I'd ever seen on a cruise ship. It had a smoking section. It had a non-smoking section, and it was jam-packed. Now, this cruise was an ultra cruise in the casino, which means uh, they have given a whole lot of uh, free cruises to people to come on and gamble. And the, again, the thing was packed every time I went in there. But why do I love the casino? I love the big casino, even though it was crowded. They had two craps tables. How about that? They had a craps table in the smoking section. They had a craps table in the non-smoking section. And there was always a game going on. You could show up in the afternoon, there was a game. You could show up late night and there was a game. Most of the time, I had to wait to get on a table. And as a craps player, there's nothing better than being on a table with a bunch of people having fun and then having two options to do that. I love the casino on the Mardi Gras. Number six. The Halloween celebration. Now, I know everybody that's not going on a Halloween won't have the same experience, but Carnival continues to do great when it comes to Halloween. One of the reasons we like to cruise at Halloween is because it gives us an opportunity to get people to dress up in costumes. We had our very own costume contest. We gave away a couple trophies. Uh, this is Brian and Jody. They won for their Popeye and olive oil costume. And then uh, here's the reveal of the winner on uh, the individual. If you're ready for the presentation, do you do the trophy? Give me with a loud huzzah! huzzah! And if you love cruising, give me a, a see you on the Lido. See That's right, that's our friend Raphael Vizzo from Vizzo's Travel. He won the costume contest. And uh, yeah, Jenny and I, we dressed up as prisoners uh, or subtitled uh, What Married Feels Like. I'm still getting in trouble for that joke, but I still think it's a good joke. Uh, man, could I have looked any bigger in that costume? That, But that was the Lolita Loca Halloween costume celebration. Later that night, Carnival had their own, and they did it right there at center stage. Brought people up on stage. They gave out awards. It was a really great night. There was music that was related to Halloween, shows that were related to Halloween. Uh, I tell you what, I continue to be impressed. Uh, by Carnival's Halloween uh, experience, and then uh, even elevated on the Mardi Gras because of some of these venues like Center Stage. Number seven on my list, and man, I wish I had video of this, the Serenity area is fantastic on the Mardi Gras. And like many other Serenity areas on Carnival, they got hot tubs, but man, sitting in a hot tub in the Caribbean in the heat, it's all right, you know, but it's not as good as taking a dip in a cold pool. Well, guess what? Uh, the Mardi Gras has a cold pool. And not only is this cold pool cold, but it's uh, it's in the shade. One of the coolest places of the Serenity Deck is where the pool is. It is completely covered by shade. There's a nice sitting area around it. There's a bar right there. One of the best days that we had is in Cozumel. A lot of people got off and went to Cozumel. Jenny and I hit the hot tubs on the Serenity and then uh, took a dip in the cold pool. It's pretty sweet. Uh, this this is a spot that uh, I, I wish I could have visited more on the cruise ship, but thank you. I think there's only one other cruise ship in Carnival's fleet that has a cold pool, a swimming pool in the Serenity area. I think it's the Sunshine, uh, but they need more of this uh, because this was good. Number eight, just the general decor and design of this cruise ship. Very modern. Uh, the colors were great. Uh, again, a divergence from some of the older colors from Carnival, the old weird teals and oranges and aquas. Uh, this certainly still felt like a, a Carnival design, but it felt elevated in a modern way. Uh, you know, some of the cruise ships I've been on lately, Celebrity Edge, uh, you know, I, you really appreciate the fact that there is a moving into the modern aesthetic and uh, certainly prevalent on Mardi Gras. Some of the theming for the bars there, the fortune teller bar, the brass magnolia, you could see really a lot of, uh, you know, thought put out into how these things are going to be themed and how the decor is going to turn out. Even in the cabin, the really modern decor, it was cool. I, I really like that about uh, the Mardi Gras. You really felt like you were on a new modern ship doing something new. I thought that was cool. Number nine, the internet. Yes, I, I had the premium internet and it was fast. Fast enough, fast for a cruise ship. I was so excited whenever I wanted to upload a video, I could upload a 10 minute video in 30 minutes. Uh, compare that to some of the other cruise ships I've been on this year where I had to upload a eight to 10 minute video that took four to six hours. 
so yeah, I, whatever technology they put in place on the Mardi Gras, it was working well. I was able to use the internet to do the work that I need to do for social media, the work that I need to do for uh, YouTube. And uh, yeah, you know, there, there's a conversation out there, obviously, should you be working on a cruise ship? Well, that's part of my gig. Uh, a lot of you guys want to see what we're doing on cruise ships. You want the videos on a daily basis. And so uh, good internet is a big thing for me. And I was very pleased with the internet on Carnival Mardi Gras. Now, number 10, and this was the thing I love the most on Carnival Mardi Gras. I've said it many times, my cruising profile looks like this. I like to stay in during the day. I like to go out in the afternoon, maybe do a trivia, but, but my day really likes to start at dinner. I like to have a nice meal. I like to go see some good entertainment. I like to end up in the casino. I like to stay up late, have late night pizza, go to bed sometime in the wee hours of the morning. That's the way I like to cruise. And one knock I've always had against Carnival is I didn't really feel like they made a huge investment in the entertainment. I, I saw other companies doing it better, in my opinion. Uh, well, hello, uh, Carnival has stepped up. A huge investment in entertainment on the Mardi Gras. I cannot tell you how excited I was. There was more stuff that I, could, I couldn't see everything. They had a huge variety of comedians. They had shows in the Mardi Gras Theater, which is the main theater. They had shows every night at center stage. They had a band that would just blow your mind, the backyard band. There was live music in many of the bars. Carnival stepped up. I'm just saying they stepped up hard and heavy when it comes to entertainment. You had multiple teams doing, like the, the band that was assigned to center stage, the singers that were assigned to center stage, they were different than the people that were assigned to the shows in the theater. Um, it was good. There was acrobatics. There was visual displays of these screens. Uh, there was theme. There was a magician comedians, and it didn't just stop with entertainment around performing. They also had a huge variety of trivias. They had many karaoke's that lasted for more than an hour, which is something that was always a challenge on other Carnival cruise ships. Uh, big ups, big ups to Carnival Mardi Gras for what they did with entertainment. I super loved the entertainment on Mardi Gras. I was super impressed. Now there were some things I did not like, and I will tell you about those, but first, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. All right, four things that I did not like on Carnival Mardi Gras. Number one, the cabin. Sadly, I did not like the cabin. We had a regular balcony cabin and it seemed thinner. It seemed less wide than other carnival cabins that I'd had before. My speculation based on nothing other than pure speculation is, is, is like somebody went, look, if we took a foot or two out of each of the cabins, we could end up with more cabins on each deck. That's what it felt like. It felt like somebody got a tape measure out and said, let's cut out a foot and then we can have more cabins. The door would not open all the way. The, the, you're, you had to shimmy. And look, this was not just because I'm a big guy. I heard this from smaller people too. The door would always not open all the way and you'd have to shimmy to get in. Toward the end of the week, I kept bumping into the card reader and knocking the plastic off. I was re I was fixing the door every day. And then once you got in the cabin, you had to shimmy sideways to get between the bed and the TV. It was tight. It, it was tight for two people. And then if you know that the cabin is tight, the bathroom was also tight. Now, I tell you what, uh, I can't knock them for the shower. They did a nice thing. They got rid of the shower curtains. They got a nice solid door. I did well in the shower, but uh, the rest of the bathroom, kind of small. Uh, so one thing I did not love, you know, you make do, right? We weren't in the cabin much. You make do. But one thing I did not love on the Carnival Mardi Gras was the size of the cabin. Number two, the buffet. The buffet was weird. Like, we went there a couple times, but, you know, what was weird about it is uh, the way the stations were set up. Here, here's my one beef. I can never find cantaloupe on its own. I do not like when you take all the fruits and mix it together in a bowl. I like it when you could get your cantaloupe separate or your watermelon separate. I know this is a nuanced thing, right? I'm nitpicking. You know, I, again, I could make a, I just love the Mardi Gras video, but I, I, if you want to know the things that really kind of made me scratch my head, the buffet layout. And then they would serve things to you in dishes, but not in dishes that you could carry easily. So like if you went to the hot dog or the shawarma place inside the buffet, 
They give you this little dish that you might be able to carry two in your hand, but it's not a plate, so you couldn't really stack it with other plates. It was a challenge. I, I didn't feel like the selection was, it was just weird to me. It, it, has anybody been to Carnival to the buffet? Did you find it weird? Is it just me? Leave a comment below. But the buffet, I didn't, I wasn't digging it. The third thing I didn't really love about the Carnival Mardi Gras, this is gonna be specific to me, I couldn't find an AC outlet outside of my cabin where I could sit down and work a little bit. Now I ran that poll yesterday, some of you participated. It only looks like less than 15% of us are really trying to work on a cruise ship. So again, this problem is super specific to me, but a lot of times, you know, I would get up earlier than Jenny, she'd still be sleeping. I didn't want to bother her, but I'd want to work on a video or something. So I'd take my whole pack, all my gear, and wander around to try to find a place to record a video or to try to edit a video. And almost everywhere I went, I couldn't find any power for my laptop. So I would work till my laptop battery was done. I would use the battery backup that I brought, but still, if I had to go anything beyond that, I couldn't find a cool place. Like, I tell you what, center stage would have been a great place to work, uh, but there was no AC outlets there, so I would work there until my stuff would die. I still think, I still, you know, for us 10 percenters or us 15% of the people that want to work, Give us a little room with a cubby or it's just some power. Uh, I think Carnival could easily do that to accommodate uh, people like myself that work on a cruise ship. Again, I'm a minority, so maybe it's not worth the effort, but uh, yeah, didn't love that. And number four on the nitpicking journey, they introduced a new included option, uh, in an area called Street Eats. And Street Eats ended up being three stalls out on the Lido where they would have different food each day. They would have like a French fry place, they would have a, like a bun or a dim sum place, and then they would have something where they like one day they made pad thai, another day they had kebabs. They, again, it was very similar to the odd buffet. They would just make you a dish and they put it in a w little weird dish and then you'd have to try to carry, you know, like you could only get one thing at a time and a lot of times the food didn't make sense and it did you know and it wasn't always open street eats to me was a little bit of a miss i i, I really thought it was going to be something different but uh innovation nonetheless and look as i'm finishing up this list a couple other things come to mind just honorable mentions e-muster super easy the embarkation super crowded so like other cruise lines it's it's got its hit or misses and, but here's the cool thing. This is the, the first iteration of this, right? We talk about iterative learning. You do something, you, you look at what works well, you look at what's challenged, and then you make changes. And the cool thing is they'll be able to make changes on the next XL cruise ship, the celebration that will be coming out late next year, and you will be able to see what they change. So I'm interested to see what they've learned from Mardi Gras, how they change that from the celebration. But right now, this is if you can get on Mardi Gras, if you can get there for a good price, uh, I think you'd have a great time. But look, that's just my opinion. I would love to hear yours. Have you been on Mardi Gras? Do you agree, disagree with me? Look, we didn't even talk about towel animals and Showtime. I'm just gonna leave that for another day. Uh, but did you like Mardi Gras? Did you not like Mardi Gras? And then if you've never been on Mardi Gras, what's something on my list that sounds really interesting to you? Leave a comment below. And I know a lot of you out there are probably saying, well, what did Jenny B think about the Mardi Gras? Well, we are going live at 9 p.m. tonight. So come to the live show and hear about Jenny's likes and dislikes of the Mardi Gras. And then uh, I'll make sure that I link that right up here once that show is a show that I can link. So if you're catching this later on in life, uh, go check out and see what Jenny B thought about it. Thank you so much for checking out this review of the Mardi Gras. Please hit the like button or on your next cruise, I'm sneaking into your cabin and I'm, well, I'm gonna decapitate your towel animal. It's, it's gonna happen. This is Tony with La Lido Loca. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.